this project is a must do project at least once in your life you need to try glue boutique it's so fun you get great results and this one is also something that can make like a great souvenir for somebody a great gift for a friend um, or a great way to remember a special trip that you went on um, I was lucky enough for the past two summers to go to New York City and I absolutely love it there and so I wanted to make um, a map to kind of remember like the areas where we stayed and where we ate and just kind of hung out and so this is my batik map that I made here and so you can see I added like the little compass to it I got my little NYC over here I have like the Washington Square arch right there um, and just different things um, throughout my map that I wanted to remember. Um, this project is best to do it like in several um, different times. Like you can't just sit down and do it all at once because you have glue that has to dry, then you have paint that has to dry, and you wash it out. But all of the steps are easy. Um, they just take time to dry in between. So before you get started, keep that in mind. But anyways, I will go ahead now and show you how to get started. All right, so we're ready to begin our glue boutique maps on paper. And just a special note, this is canvas paper that I'm using for this project. So here are the supplies you need for today's project. You'll have to have that canvas paper. You can buy it, I think they sell it at Walmart. I got mine at Hobby Lobby, um, but it's pretty affordable. This one was like 10 bucks and I got it, I think when it was half off and it comes with 10 sheets. So not too bad on price. You'll need some washable glue. You need to make sure that it's washable. Um, you can also use like the gel glue. I just tip, typically stick with normal glue. You will want a printout of the area that you would like to do. I did this one just like on my phone from like going to Google Maps and typing in a destination. Then I just did a screenshot and sent it to my printer. Um, but you'll need, you know, some visual so you know where the streets are for your map. And then you'll also need a pencil um, and then a Sharpie marker for later. The only thing I didn't mention on the list here is the warm soapy water. We will add that later, but first we have to draw out the map and add the glue and then wait for it to dry. And so I won't need that soapy water until the glue has dried. So we'll, we'll get that later. Okay, for step one, you need to spend a little bit of time planning. What I did is after I printed my map out, I highlighted the streets and like little landmarks that I want to include for my map. And so you can see here is the one that I have where it has like the the pink lines because I can't include everything um, and you want to make it a work of art where it's interesting so pick out the things that are important to you um, that you want to stand out and then I went a step further because I had some leftover transparencies at home like you would use on an overhead projector so I kind of just traced it out so I could see what that design would look like um, before drawing it on the paper so now that I have this nice clear um, outline I will go ahead and go on to the next step because I'm ready to draw. Okay, so I have my piece of canvas paper. You'll notice that I am enlarging it and making it bigger. Um, canvas paper comes in lots of sizes, so you could make it any size that you wanted to. Um, I'm going to draw lightly with the pencil. That way, if I have to erase, it is easy to do. Um, I'll show you. This was my little test sample here where I did the glue and then washed it off. And I used, there's on the paper when you feel it, um, one side is kind of rough like sandpaper and then the other is smooth. And I'm going to work on the rougher side that feels a little bit like sandpaper on my fingertips. So now I'll just enlarge my design onto here. Okay, so now I have my map all traced out and I'm ready, um, or all drawn out, and I'm ready to trace it with the glue. And when I do my glue, I'll actually go like right beside the pencil lines. Um, and I will make, like you'll notice on this one, some of the lines are thicker. Um, and it looks really nice when you make some of the glue lines thick and some thinner. It just kind of adds interest to your batik. And so now I will go ahead and get started with the glue. Okay, so now that I've got all my glue lines traced, I'm just going to let this dry for a few hours or you could let it dry overnight and then I'm going to come back and use acrylic paints to paint it in. 
Okay, so at this point, the glue is dry, and it's like, you'll notice my paper is kind of buckled up in places, and that's normal. Um, I leave the dried glue there while I paint, so that's my next step is to go ahead um, and use acrylic paint and paint in the areas. And you can paint over the glue lines. You don't have to go around them. Um, it still works to paint over because once that peels off and washes away, it will reveal the white canvas underneath. Um, you can be creative with this part, like of course around the edges where there's water, I'll use some blues, but like have fun adding color, make it interesting, use colors that work, you know, in your home or for your project, whatever you're using. Um, in areas, you know, there's parks, you can of course do green or add, um, like little emblems. I'll also go back later after I paint with the acrylic paint, I'll let it dry and then wash it out, but I will go back with a Sharpie marker um, later and label certain streets and certain landmarks, but that's kind of like the last step. So after applying the glue, letting that dry, then it's time to go ahead and paint your color in. And then the last step is to go in and label. So now I'm just going to go ahead and go in and add that paint and um, make it pop with some color. All right, so now we're ready for step four. It's time to paint your map. Don't worry about the glue lines. Just have fun adding color and be creative. And then make sure you let your paint dry completely. Okay, so now that I've got it all painted in, I'm just going to let it dry. And you can notice, like, I painted over the glue lines. I'm going to try to kind of zoom in here so you can see. You can still kind of see the texture of the glue through the paint. Um, and so that's what will peel off and leave those white lines later. So it's definitely not finished. I just have to let it dry completely. I'll probably leave it overnight tonight. And then tomorrow, come back and wash it with some warm soapy water. Okay, so this is where things get interesting. Step five, we've painted our map. It is dry. We are ready to wash it in some warm soapy water. And it is helpful to use your fingers to wash away the glue lines. So as you put it in the water, kind of feel those glue lines and kind of rub them and they'll kind of peel off in the water. So now I am going to go ahead and thoroughly wash it in this warm soapy water. Okay, so here is my map. It is still wet from being washed, and I can still kind of feel some slippery glue, but my water had gotten pretty dirty from the paint that washed out um, and the glue, so I'm going to take it now and just run it under some hot water under the sink to kind of get little specks of paint and stuff off that are loose on it, but you can see it washed out really easy and pretty fast, um, so now I'm just going to rinse it, then I'm going to let it dry, and then I'll be ready to move on to the next step. Okay, so my map is dry and now I am ready for the final step. Um, I'm going to use different Sharpies. Um, you could also use any type of permanent marker. Um, and I'm going to go in and kind of like outline the different streets. I'm going to add landmarks like the little Washington Square Arch and the Brooklyn Bridge over here. Um, and then I'm going to label like streets that were important to me and special places that we visited. And I'm also going to add um, like a little compass showing um, north, south, east, and west just to add some interest to my map. But that is my final step. And so I've got my different types of Sharpies right here. And now I will go in and do that last step. I am so excited about how my finished batik map turned out and now I get to go and pick out a frame and figure out where I'm going to hang it in my house and it will always be a great reminder of time with my family in New York City. When you're ready to start on this project you can pause it right here and these are the steps listed for you so you can remember how to start and what comes next. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. See you later.